Indeed, hey ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags, and welcome back to War Thunder Naval Battles. Yes, once again this weekend, Gaijin opened up the closed beta test event in order to let us have a little bit more of a play with their destroyers. Now, in my personal opinion, I didn't really feel a whole lot of change from the last CBT event that was made available, where the destroyers were first showcased. However, we did get a little bit of a different lineup this time. The three nations that were available for this CBT was Russia, Great Britain, and of course the United States. And that's what we're going to be taking a quick, brief look at today. This is the United States Navy's Fletcher-class destroyer. So, the Fletcher-class destroyer, first designed in 1939, going into construction in the early 1940s with the first units entering commission service in 1942. During World War II, the Fletcher class represented one of the most advanced destroyer designs in service in the United States Navy, and it fulfilled just about every role you could think of for a destroyer. It did anti-submarine warfare, anti-aircraft escort roles, fleet escort, recon, anti-shipping. It was responsible for sinking more Japanese submarines than any other destroyer class in the United States Navy. It was also one of the single biggest destroyers in US service. At 114 meters long, the Fletcher was starting to creep towards light cruiser levels of length. In terms of armament, the Fletcher was extremely well equipped. She was armed with five dual purpose 5 inch or 127 millimeter guns in single mounts, two in the bow and three in the stern, behind the boiler exhaust stacks. She was guided by a Mark 37 gunfire control system and also featured a Mark 12 fire control radar, allowing for an extremely accurate fire, especially over range. And in addition to the primary cannon armament, also featured two deck mounted quad torpedo launchers that could fire either over the port or starboard side, rotating on their mount, allowing the Fletcher to very quickly drop a spread of the Mark 15 torpedo that it was equipped with at the time. And then, of course, there was her anti aircraft craft armament. Now there were a lot of configurations that were available for this particular ship, in fact it was one of the things that was most liked about the Fletcher, the fact that she could be very quickly reconfigured based on her roles, but as a general rule the anti-aircraft defences on the Fletcher would always feature some combination of 50 caliber, 20 mm and 40 mm anti-aircraft guns. So, as you can see, the Fletcher was an extremely capable ship, which is why it is no surprise that the vessel was modernized and the Fletchers in US service actually saw service to post-Vietnam before featuring retirement. In fact, the Fletchers had a really long life in foreign navies as well. I believe the last Fletcher class was retired from service at around 2000-2001 from the Mexican Navy meaning the Fletcher class enjoyed a solid 60 years of military service before finally being retired. But how does it perform in War Thunder? Well, honestly, it's not bad. It's extremely mobile. It is very, very, very quick to turn, able to change direction very quickly, as I'm sure you've seen in this video already. Its overall acceleration is quite good. It's actually not that bad at changing locations and position on the map. What I found when driving out the Tribal in the last CBT test for Naval Forces was you sort of had to pick where you wanted to sail the Tribal to. And once it was there, that's where you were going to fight. You weren't going to be able to change directions rapidly. Think of it like driving a slow, heavily armoured tank, say the Mouse in Ground Forces. You sort of have to pick exactly where you're going to put the mouse, and at that point, that's where you're fighting, like it or not. Hope the enemies show up. If they don't, you're going to have to deal with it. The Fletcher isn't like that. It's mobile enough to be able to get around the map at a fairly reasonable pace. It's actually not a whole lot slower than some of the PT boats that I've managed to encounter on the maps. So it's an ideal ship to put into an offensive position and then be able to rapidly switch back to a defensive one if needed, which is what I've done here. I brought the Fletcher into the map. I was starting to push down the south side of the map, realized that the enemy team was pretty much unchallenged moving in from the north, and I've quickly changed direction to get in and around my convoy in order to start directly engaging multiple enemy ships simultaneously in order to hold them off for long enough for my team to be able to make it to the enemy convoy and start working the convoy ships over. 
So mobility is definitely a feather that the Fletcher has in its cap, but what about everything else? Well, in terms of firepower, she's reasonably okay too. She is accurate over range, she doesn't get a lot of rock or a lot of movement. The guns took me a little bit to get used to, they seem to fire slightly odd due to the spacing, especially when going broadside, but the guns are so far apart that waiting and working out exactly how to shoot them did take a little bit of effort, but once you manage to get past that, they are extremely accurate and I'll be able to pick out sections of the ship's hull quite easily in order to take them down. The biggest issue of Fletcher, however, is that she is not very well armoured in comparison to some of the other ships that I've driven out in the CBT. In particular, the Tribal. When I sailed the Tribal out for the first time, I found it was very easy to angle the ship in much the same way that you would angle a tank and ricochet shots off the hull. The Fletcher, I honestly never found a situation where any guns coming in my direction or shells coming in my direction could not penetrate the hull regardless of what angle I put the ship on. This means while she's able to get into a defensive position very rapidly, she can't really hold it because pretty much everybody is going to go straight through her. Although that's not to say that she hasn't got some defenses of her own. As I mentioned, she is extremely nimble, uh, far more than the tribal ever was. So quickly changing heading and speed is usually enough to throw off a large amount of the incoming fire. But over time, she will eventually succumb to the damage, which is again, what's happening here. I guess if I was to go back to the analogy of ground forces to naval battles, if the the tribal was a heavy tank, the Fletcher would be a medium. She's not a ship that's designed to burrow into a location and defend it against all odds, but seems to be more of a ship that is designed to be able to switch back and forth through sections of the team as is needed, harassing and delaying enemy forces until heavier ships can arrive or for long enough for the rest of the team to achieve whatever it has to. And honestly, I quite enjoy that. It was actually quite a lot of fun to sail this thing around. You could sail absolute circles in amongst most of the ships and running into PT boats that were shocked to realize that uh, not only could they not outrun the guns, but they were only just slightly faster than the destroyer to begin with. I mean, as I'm sure you've noticed speeds on the ship during the course of this battle, it's quite possible for Fletcher to get up over 60 kilometers an hour on water, which is fair fall in ass when you consider that this is, depending on load, between a 2,000 and 2,500 tonne displacement destroyer. So at this point, the last destroyer that the enemy team has sent through to try and harass our ships is currently pinned against the island engaging me. We've got a PT boat coming up from behind. There is a dive bomber operating in the area. I'm thinking what shots I can, but due to the way it's angled itself to the front, even though my shells are going cleanly through the front of the boat, I'm not damaging the rear sections of the ship, so I cannot destroy it at this time. I'm ruining its front sections and doing all manner of damage but it wasn't enough to take it out, and as a result, it takes me out. Still, I managed to wipe out three enemy destroyers, I managed to get one assist in there at the cost of only one ship, and managed to hold the enemy team up enough that by the time I had selected my next ship and hit the deploy button, the match had already ended. Second place for the team and one ship in exchange for a victory is a deal that I can most certainly accept. So that is the United States Fletcher class destroyer. I actually am really enjoying driving the destroyers around. I still think there is a lot of work that needs to be done in War Thunder naval battles at this time, but the destroyers were definitely a positive step in improving the overall gameplay, and I'm definitely much more interested in following it now. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you would like to help me out on the channel directly, to check out my Patreon in the video description down below. Otherwise, as always, click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll catch you next time.